disrupt it. So something magical may have just happened, ladies and gentlemen, in result of Lindsey Graham may have revealed a huge, big truth about the war in Ukraine. And all the times that we mentioned about freedom and democracy and protecting the people, Lindsey Graham went on to CBS's Face the Nation and may have just accidentally or maybe purposely reveal the actual results and the real strategic reason of why we're advancing warfare against Russia and involved in Ukraine. Listen to this. Uh, what did Trump do to get the weapons flowing? He created a loan system. They're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. They could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help Ukraine now, they can become the best business partner we ever dreamed of. That 10 to $12 trillion of critical mineral assets could be yeah. used by Ukraine and the West. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back this up a second. Did the warmongering lesbian soccer coach just tell us that this is about minerals? What, what happened to the freedom? What happened to democracy? What happened to the, you know, Ukrainian values or Western values? What happened to Sean Penn, you know, giving his Oscar to such an effective leader? Oh, my God. It's all about mineral wealth. Who would have thunk it? Wow. Could it be like every other country that we massively invaded and took over and then fought and uh, uh, devastated their population to steal their resources? Can we really be playing the same playbook over and over again? Turns out, yes. Turns out, yes. They don't have many strategies. <laughs> That's how I knew the Ukraine war was bullshit. That's how I know a lot of these wars are bullshit because you hear the exact same words over and over and over and over and over and over again. Nothing, none of this has anything to do with freedom, folks. None of it or humanity, or protecting people, or defending anything. The only thing that Lindsey Graham is defending, other than the fact that he looks like Victoria Newland in drag. I had to throw that in there. He does look like a butchy version of her. Maybe if Victoria Newland went to Equifax more often. Um, <laughs> or Planet Fitness. Um... The only thing that Lindsey Graham is defending is his seat in Congress and being a senator. Uh, <coughs> he's defending his career by elevating the war machine. I, th that's that, the fact that he's able to say that on CBS News and CBS News just kind of goes along with it. Not even like, wait, what? Like, you, you think there's someone in the mainstream media be like, oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, wait, wait. What do you mean that like all the times that we've been told that it's about freedom and, and, and prosperity, like that was all a lie? What? Want to hear it again? This, this is amazing. Uh, what did Trump do to get the weapons flowing? He created a loan system. They're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. Critical they minerals. could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help. I'm going to go on the brink and say that the critical minerals that they're talking about maybe is something to do with all the EVs. The hunch there. Because, you know. When you look at resources that are critical to the United States and don't want China or Russia to have some of the action. <laughs> I guess that's why Lindsey Graham is so angry. Just Russia doesn't know how to share. <laughs> Unlike us, we want to take it away from the Ukrainians, maybe give them some pocket change in, in, in hopes of it, give them some reimbursement but then sell it off to a bunch of our uh, allies, our business allies, 
and then sell it to the masses. Like a healthy democracy should, right? Eradicate its own population, demonize, weaponize, villainize to the point of nuclear annihilation and then take all those resources and sell it to the rest of the suckers. Wow. And to say that so elegantly on a Sunday morning uh, <coughs> political program without even, the, without even the host batting an eye. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You mean all that stuff I said beforehand was all lies? Am I really a face of propaganda? Oh my God, I may have to think, rethink this, you know, journalism title. Maybe I'm just a stenographer this whole time. Uh, so that's amazing that just out of the blue, hey, we're just there for minerals. Just like Trump when he said in the White House, hey, we're there in Syria for the oil, baby. And everyone had a heyday and freaked out because, oh, my God, he admitted that he did war crimes. Yeah, just like every other presidency that's occupied the White House. I hate to break the news to you folks, but unless you a are a immoral, psychotic warmonger, you don't get a position in power like that. That's the only reason you have the title job that you're in right now is you sell your soul off to massacre bunches of people at a time. That's the only reason that people like Lindsey Graham or Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi or Mitch McConnell or Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and any other person gets the position of power that they... Do you really think it's their qualities? Do you think it's their expertise? No. It's because they're able to sell themselves out like the whores that they are to this evil, reginous cult used to demonize the entire population of Earth. It is a horrific blood curling cults used to weaponize against humanity and Lindsey Graham just revealed uh, revealing part of that plan that really it's just the exact same all along strategy and here's Colonel Douglas McGregor uh who's been very very vocal about the truth about the Ukrainian war he's been on a lot of uh independent interviews and and platforms and podcasts Here's him, a former uh, former head of the U.S. Army, um, Colonel Douglas McGregor, uh, revealing all this and revealing the true intention of the Ukrainian war against Russia. Listen to this. Or in Ukraine, which is happening there. And what do you, you know, what, what is the end game? Well, for the globalists that are running the show, this is the globalist neocon elite and both on the Hill as well as in the White House and these elites in Europe, particularly in Paris, Berlin, London, they're all interested in seeing BlackRock take over Ukraine, number one, so that it can be systematically stripped of its resources and turned into a subjugated state that belongs to the larger globalist elites. But they also want to see that happen to Russia which is why this war was never about Ukraine. It was always about what can be done to destroy Russia. And of course, since the people in charge didn't perform any strategic analysis, they never thought about purpose, method, or end state, they concluded that Russia today is still the Russia of 1992. It's weak. It's prostrate. Its economy is ineffective. Remember the McCain statement? Oh, Russia is Spain with a gas station? All of these arrogant displays of American hubris treating Russia as though it was a third-class nation with a fourth-class military. Well, we're getting an education right now. We paid no attention to the Russians who had legitimate concerns about what we were doing in eastern Ukraine. We were building an army to attack them. We put a hostile government into that country in 2014, and we kept telling them that it made no difference to us what they thought or what they cared about. They said, we don't want NATO on our border. No one paid attention. President Trump tried to listen, but he was surrounded by people who subverted him. People who were not loyal to the president, who, who took an oath of obedience to the orders of the president and then ignored them. 
So what's what's the outcome? You've got a very serious war that could become regional, even global. And no one in the White House seems to really grasp that. But we're losing. The globalists are losing. And when the ground dries and in June you're, you're going to see a massive Russian offensive and most of what we call this thing called Ukraine is going to be swept away, especially that government in Kiev. But that government doesn't represent the interests of the Ukrainian people. They represent the interests of this globalist elite who are interested in resources and stripping them and using them and exploiting them to make money. Yeah, uh, it feels like, you know, the there you go. The whole intention of even getting involved in Ukraine, getting involved in liberating them, the whole intention of it has nothing to do with the Ukrainian people. The only thing we're using Ukrainian people is to send them on this suicide mission of attacking Russia to advance our globalist regime of advancing warfare to make a profit off this. Just like any other war invasion, just like any time we do a regime change war, which is why I find it so hilarious that at a time like this, where we're seeing the possibility of World War III, the possibility of nuclear annihilation, the fact that we're doing this in Ukraine, we're also having wars with Israel and Palestine, we're also advancing warfare with Taiwan, we're also trying to do a civil war in Haiti, we're also trying to expand militarily while destroying our own empire, and the fact that people are not seeing this at this point is amazing to me. The fact that we survived 20 years of war lies that people picked up on at some point, they were calling out the bullshit uh, war in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden Ukraine came around and then all those same people they used to call out for war were advancing warfare because they got sucked in to the endless propaganda vacuum of Trump derangement syndrome. Trump is part of Putin's ploy. Russia has something to do with us. Russia is misinforming us. I don't want to be, you know, cultivating this Russian cult. And we got to liberate the people of Ukraine. It had nothing to do with the people. And I've been calling it out from the get-go. And the people that look into war and investigate and tell you the truth about war, they get silenced out for this. And that is why Colonel Douglas McGregor, the only way you're going to hear this speech is on a channel called Hat's Truth and not anywhere on mainstream media. They're not going to bring this guy on. They're not going to tell, even though he's clearly educated on the subject, he has seen what's happening. He is following along with Russia's war path. They're, right now, they're lining Russian warships along Cuba. They're heading in our direction while we're still continuing to advance warfare over there. And we have shown this time and time before. We have seen and shown you how this is all part of one singular globalist ploy. All these wars, all this catastrophic damage, how we encourage and rile up people to go and massacre other people. The whole purpose of this is exploitation to build up the war machine so that they can profit off this. And since Russia and since uh, Ukraine has a bunch of mineral wealth and grain, because we, remember we showed you that Black uh, BlackRock interview that James O'Keefe put together, where they said that hey, if you know we have sanctions on Russia and Ukraine goes into war, that's good for us because wheat prices are going to go up, meaning our stock in wheat agriculture is going to skyrocket. That's good for BlackRock, but not good for us. The whole intention of this is a systematic global terrorist elitist cult that's systematically putting us at bay with these endless wars, continuous catastrophic wars to advance their regimes, to advance their powers, to segregate and divide people and conquer over humanity. And for all those suckers that are still on social media waving the Ukraine flag or uh, waving the Israeli flag, thinking that this is some sort of resistance and they actually give a shit about people, they don't. 
It's time for you to wake up and make you realize that the top 1% that are sitting in their ivory towers pledging for warfare are never going to fight for you. That's what makes George Washington different than Lindsey Graham. George Washington at least fought in a war. He defended people to make a country. Lindsey Graham will never fight in goddamn shit. That's why Jesse Ventura coined the phrase chicken hawks. Because they're hawkish when it comes to their policies, but when they actually have to confront a battle or if they actually had to, you know, fight the wars that they created, they're nowhere to be around. They're they're cowards. They're useless goddamn cowards for the state. And the people that get sacrificed is us. We're the ones that are stuck in the bloodshed, and we're the ones that are calling this out. Because, finally, people are awake to realize how they've been despeeved and and, and employed into this, how we're being used and abused and exploited in this never-ending war, tyrannical regime the military industrial complex that we were warned about in the 60s still as relevant today as it was back then mm-hmm.